Being a writer is something that I always had an interest in. Originally, I think I wanted to be an engineer, a material science engineer. And I actually find them very similar in the sense that, you know, in material science engineering, you're basically developing new compounds out of other elements. And I think in uh, literature and writing, you're doing the same thing just with language. Mm -hmm. you know, so in, in one area, it's sort of like the substance is the technology. Um, but in you know, writing, the language is the technology. There are some fields that maybe they're in short supply of people who are talented. That's not the case for us. That is not the case for yours. There are a lot of people who want to do this job, have dreamt of it forever, and are willing to do the work to get there. How did you get it? Um, honestly, I got started publishing early. That made a big difference for me. So I, I published my first book at 23 when I was in grad school. Mm -hmm. So I, I came in with that sort of an odd coincidence. I was applying to actually study nonprofit arts management at the university and somehow they found out I was coming and they said, hey, you know, we hear you're coming to school. Would you mind teaching some classes for us? <laughs> And I'm like, sure, DC is ridiculously expensive. I wouldn't mind a little extra money. And I was doing that. And honestly, my intention wasn't to become uh, a professor. I really wanted to work in the nonprofits art field because I saw that that was somewhere where they needed younger people like me to lead organizations. But as I got drawn deeper and deeper into teaching and sort of working with more, more students, I said, you know what, I think maybe this is something I could do for a while. I don't know if I want to do it forever because I also don't want to just hold my space. Like there are some professors and, you know, God bless them, but some who teach for like 60 years. Yeah. And it's not that I doubt that people can stay current, but I do think there needs to be overturn, right? So I wouldn't just want to hold my spot forever. So at some point I'm probably going to do something different, but for now I'm happy doing this. You owe it to the work to move the work forward, right? So today i um, speaking at the Hurston Wright Foundation Writers Conference, their Summer Writers Conference and they're having a panel on navigating the publishing industry, particularly for emerging writers, young writers who are just trying to get to that first contract, that first book, um, which can be very confusing, sort of constantly changing. So a lot of the work that I do with emerging writers, I do because these things weren't available for me when I was an emerging writer. There's lots of stuff that I sort of had to figure out on my own. So I always feel like the way that, you know, you can make the field better is that uh, you set someone else up so that they don't have to fall into all the holes that you had to fall into and crawl out of in order to get to where you are. Um, and particularly since you know, the Hurston Wright Foundation is a, a foundation that focuses on African American writers who face some of their own challenges in the literary field, um, I think it's all the more important that we sort of like pool those uh, institutional knowledge resources and sort of like share it with as many people as we can. In something like poetry, which for a lot of us, it's, it's hard to really figure out sometimes what it's about. Um, it really has to come through inspiration, through your eyes. Are you inspired through reality, through imagination, through chemistry, as you said? Right, I mean, it's all those things. So I'll say, for, first of all, a lot of the problem with poetry pedagogy in America, and probably other parts of the world, is that we approach it from that about stance. Like, we look at a poem and say, what is it about? I never start there. I say, sort of, what do you notice in this poem? What does this poem make you feel? Like, just what, is, what reactions do you have? And then from there, you can go, all right, you know you're having that reaction. So what about the text? Like, what about that technology of language is making you have that reaction? Hmm. So then we're getting to, like, oh, this is what the language is doing to me. And that's something that the poet consciously set up to happen, right? So then you're sort of, like, taking it apart. You know, I get inspiration from anime. I read The Economist, right? You know, I'm, you know, interested in like health and fitness, different things that I read, right? So, you know, my influences are all over the place. And that's one of the things I love about being a writer is that I'm always asking myself that question, how do I take all this random stuff that I'm interested in and turn it into a poem, which most people aren't interested in, that someone who isn't me <laughs> will want to read. I know you get to be on a college campus all the time, but being on the quad feels so good. So I'm wondering for people, you know, that are college students or those out there that always dreamt of becoming a professor like this, how would they start? Um, 
I think you start by identifying what angle is it that you want to take in terms of your approach to literature. Do you want to look at it from a historical perspective, a cultural, socioeconomic perspective, uh, an aesthetic perspective as sort of a creative writer? Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, you want to think, well, what other graduate degree would I need in order to be a professor? So that will sort of like get you up there. But what really gets you in the door is like, what am I writing? So like, what texts? Am I going to put together that pretty much like I could potentially only put together and well that would be attractive and really captures people's imagination.